Hey guys, in today's video, we are traveling the Mojave Road. If you're new here, welcome to the channel and don't forget to subscribe. So as I stated, we are hitting the Mojave Road today. Hopefully I can get some good content. If not, you guys will never see this. Either way, I'm really looking forward to an exciting trip. This is something that me and Judson back there in his Suburban have been talking about for years. You would think that being from Mojave, I would have traveled the Mojave Road a long time ago, but realistically, to get to the starting point on the east side here, we actually had to drive close to 300 miles from where I live to the beginning of this trail. Anyway, I don't wanna waste any more of your time. We're gonna go ahead and hop in these rigs and head down the trail. So as I stated earlier, we did start on the east side. We went ahead and drove on into Fort Mojave and built up. It is $1.60 less a gallon than it is for the cheapest gas where I live. So absolutely, it was well worth going across to get gas on the other side. It was also nice to go ahead and stop at a Smith's and get anything that we might have forgot. Also, I forgot Pop-Tarts. So, I mean, obviously, how am I gonna eat breakfast in the truck without Pop-Tarts? So, got me some Pop-Tarts. So I'm hoping that we're gonna make a pretty decent time it is 12.30 right now. We are about a mile in, and I'm hoping that we can get to about 50 miles in for camp tonight. There is a campground. I'm hoping it's not completely full. It has toilets, and toilets are, are important. It's going to cost me $12 tonight just to camp where there's a toilet. This desert is a beautiful place and I wish I would have taken more pictures along the way. If you would like to see more of the beauty of the Mojave Road, be sure to check out Judson's channel at Four Wheeled Adventures. I will leave a link at the end of this video. So good thing to know right off the get-go, uh, we're a few miles in now and I decided to put it in four low because we went through this weird rocky section. It's got them rocks in the middle of the road that like to jump out and bite you. I just don't want any problems. So I went ahead and put it in four low just so I can kind of creep along. I really wish you guys could see what I'm seeing behind me. That suburban runner right now is a beast. The way it's just going over everything, it looks mean as it's coming over a hill. Look at all these Joshua trees. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a Joshua tree before, but they look wonky. I mean, just look at that thing. There's no like rhyme or reason to the way it grows. I mean, like trees normally grow towards the sun and all that, but I mean, it's just all over the place. And, and these things are pretty cool. But if you decide to venture out and take a look at some Joshua trees, if you think they look pokey, they most definitely are, and they will jump out and bite you. And if you do decide to go walk around just a little bit, be careful because there is cactus out there. I know we're in California and people don't think that cactus is in California. They think of cactus in Arizona or, you know, Texas, places like that. But there is cactus here in California. And uh, you want to talk about jumping out and biting you? Yeah, it's not fun. If you do get a chance to look at some cactus, please stop. If you do get a chance to look at some cactus, you can see where some of it's dead and dried out. Look at all the holes. Cactus just, just grows weird. And I assume that this is so it can get more water or I don't know, but it is really cool looking at cactus. I wish I could find a really big piece out here and take it home, hang it on my wall. You can see that they're really low and they're easy to miss. 
Not only that, snakes. Watch out for snakes, especially in the warmer months. You never know what you're going to come across. But don't be afraid of the snakes. Just know that they're more afraid of you than you are of them. But that's why they get so defensive. Anyway, walk with your head down a little bit more and you should be all right. And then you got this guy over here reaching down and touching it. How much change you got in the ashtray? There anything in that. I don't want to blow any lights. <laughs> Is the paper still in the cigarette lighter? Uh, it was. I took it out, but it's, it's in here. But I just literally took it out like a few seconds ago. So <laughs> I'm charging my phone. That's the whole reason it lives in there is to not pop fuses. Is this the correct trail? According to Onyx, it is. I just wonder about the one on the right. It looks like it's a major road, and it goes up there a ways and then reconnects back with the Mojave Road, so maybe? So my first stop right here is a balancing boulder or balancing rock, whatever you want to call it, campground. But there are some precariously placed boulders up there. It is really kind of neat. I looked at a couple of them and I am really curious how they hold up. Is it a weight thing or are they somehow attached and it's just eroding in the right spot? I don't know, but I'm gonna walk up there closer and check it out. But seriously, if somebody can explain to me how that rock is sitting there like that, please leave a comment down below because I don't understand what's going on right there. It's a rock, but I don't know how well you can see it back there behind me, but that is the direction we are headed and we got a long way to go. After balancing boulders, it is time to head up towards Fort Paiute. Now, it's just a short stretch between the balancing boulders and Fort Paiute and uh, it's kind of out of the way, but it's definitely worth the stop. So we finally made it to Fort Paiute. And honestly, there's, there's just like an energy here. You can feel it. A lot of people would stop here in their travels along the Mojave Road. This was the only place for water for miles. Now it's kind of hard to imagine because where we started is the Colorado River. But back then, it took days and days to travel across the desert like this. And if you don't have water, you don't survive. So this was the stop for water and for a little bit of a rest. So if you do manage to find your way up here, there are these information signs and it is pretty cool. Please don't draw on them or anything like that. No graffiti. These are wonderful. It tells the history of this place and it will continue to tell the history as long as we take care of this beautiful land. So you can tell it's very, very green and there is water down there, but I don't want to hike through all these bushes in my shorts. Also, the sun is very sun today. It's calm, peaceful, definitely an energy. 
All right, we got some people coming up the road here, so we're gonna let them come up and then we're gonna mosey on down farther. You know, my favorite part about checking out old forts is how far you can see. Um, there is this old lookout spot up in the Paiutes near my house in Sequoia National Forest. And it is awesome because when you get up there, you can just see forever. And as soon as the snow melts, I'm going up there and I don't know who's going with me, even if I have to go by myself. But don't do as I do. It's not safe to go by yourself. Always go with a buddy because it's bear country and you just need to run faster than your buddy. I'm gonna go ahead and get my truck started, get the AC going and Justin's gonna roll down his window cause he ain't got nothing. Anyway, they caught up. I don't wanna ruin their trip by being an annoying YouTuber. So we're gonna hit the road. I would really like to get some drone shots of this area. That'd be pretty cool. But as far as I know, you're not allowed to fly drones in the Mojave National Preserve. Now, I don't know what all the ins and outs of that are, but uh, regardless, I don't have a drone yet. So, But Judson was going to buy one for this trip, and then he saw that according to the drone flying map, this whole area is a no-fly zone. The road's definitely getting getting a little bit sketchier right now, so I'm going to pay attention. Right here would really suck if there was someone coming. <laughs> I think once we get up here a ways, the road kind of smooths out. We can go a little bit faster. Off camera stuff you're talking about. No, this isn't what I saw in any video. Well, hit my skid plate. Hit my skid plate again. Yeah, I'm thinking two inch lift with 35s. That'll give me three inches of extra lift overall. Yeah, I would definitely lift that thing for sure. <laughs> I'd like to see on the last chance because that was even worse than this. It's doing great. I just have rocks keep jumping out and biting me. Do you need to stop for any reason? If you want to stop for anything, now's a good time. Otherwise, I'm going to keep on driving. Yeah, let me stop and get out for a sec. So after spending way too much time at Fort Mojave and then taking our time going up the hill, we finally crested over the top of the hill and now we can make up a lot of ground. And unfortunately, I got a little too excited about being able to cover as much ground as possible that I ended up having to do a lot of backtracking and just ended up wasting more time. So after a little backtracking, uh, we finally made it to the Penny Can Tree. If you're traveling too fast, you will miss it. Trust me, even though it's on the GPS in front of your face, you might, you might pass it by a mile or two. Anyway, we are not going to focus on the bad. We are going to focus on the good. See, what happens is you're supposed to leave a penny in the Penny Can for good luck. And 
obviously we need our luck because because I'm stupid. So right over here is a penny can. I'm going to leave my donation. Now we just need to try to head back. I wanted to be to camp uh, 20 minutes ago, and we probably still got an hour to go, maybe two hours. I don't know. I'm not gonna lie, that first camp beer is calling my name, and uh, I can't wait to get there right now. I'm thinking, I'm thinking dinner, but I'll get back to dinner later. So after the penny tree, just a couple miles up the road is this stone cabin here. Now I didn't do a ton of research on the cabin, I don't really know anything about it, but I do know that it used to be fenced off. It is fenced off now. The gate's open. I don't know. Maybe it was maintained. Maybe it's private property. I have no clue, but obviously a lot of people have been in there. And if it was a major issue, this would be reclosed and gated off and things like that because they actually come out here from time to time and check on everything in the National Preserve. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of a closer look. Now this cabin obviously isn't that old. It is a pretty modern, but it's still really cool. And by modern, I mean not a trillion years old. It's a neat stove over there. All right, so just a quick stop. I think my camera says two minutes. I turned it on as soon as I got out of the truck. So yeah, we're gonna get down on the road because we got camp to get to. Now one thing that's always important to remember is you guys are not the only ones out there. Please keep an eye out, pay attention, and watch out for the people on two wheels especially because accidents can happen so quickly and people can get hurt. So we have officially reached the most off-camber section that everybody talks about. And uh, we're, we're going to see how it goes. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to have... Judson hold the camera for me on my way down and then uh, I'll hold a camera for him down there when he comes down so let's rock Real quick, as he's coming down, I want to apologize for the loud shriek brake noise. Um, his brakes were squeaking pretty bad, and I wanted to cut out the audio, but at the Whoa, same time, I want you to guys to hear his tires rubbing his fenders, because it's pretty funny. Self-dancing fenders. Yeah. 
bad when you're uh, in the middle of the seat. <laughs> How much is it flexing? A lot. <laughs> Keep her straight, keep her straight. For those of you who doubt how steep this actually is. So for those of you at home wondering, just like I was, where exactly this spot was, it's between the rock cabin and what is it, Barnett Mine? and you can bypass it. There's a, a nice graded road that you have to cross to get this way, but you can bypass it and make a left and then backtrack back to the mine, but this way is more fun. Once again, for those of you who are wondering how steep it actually is, this is his coolant reservoir and this is the level way down here. And it was coming out the top and falling out underneath the truck, I thought maybe something was wrong. But that's how steep that actually is. And mom, if you're watching this, it's, it's not that bad, I swear. So right here somewhere is Rock Creek Camp, but it looks like they don't allow camping here. I don't know. Because there is signs that say, no camping, no vehicle access. But you can obviously see, oh man, I don't know if you can. Let me take a picture up real quick. Man, I don't know if you can see it. There's right there in the middle of that canyon, there is a nice green tree. Let me put my finger, it's right about there somewhere. Anyway, that nice green tree right there, that means that there is water. And it also looks like maybe there's a little satellite thing. Anyway. We're in a hurry, so we're gonna keep on moving. So I'm doing my best. I apologize. Uh, I'm trying to make good timing. It is now like 6.30, and my goal was to be at camp at five, and we still have like 10 or 15 miles before we get there. So, I mean, obviously it gets dark pretty quick out here. Oh my God, I can't see. Now we're driving into the sun as uh, you hear Judson uh, complaining about it. Anyway, obviously we're not making it to camp by five because that was almost two hours ago, but I'm having a great experience. I'm having a lot of fun and uh, I just want to share that with you guys. So. I'm gonna sign off right now and I'll turn the camera back on when we get to our next stop. All right, so right around the corner from where that Rock Spring camp was on my map uh, is, is actually right here. And this is your only chance for a bathroom along the Mojave Road, unless you go off course for a little ways. There are some campgrounds that have bathrooms, but if you're sticking just to the road, Guaranteed you need to make this stop because for some reason whenever I'm within sight of a bathroom immediately I have to poop Might be too much information for you, but I mean I'm here to overshare Anyway, I am gonna go take a look at that stone cabin, but first I'm gonna take a look inside this bathroom Wow, it is incredibly clean and stocked with toilet paper and extremely echoey all right, so obviously they don't want you driving up here. There is a locked gate, but there is a walkthrough pass you can go through. 
and uh, yeah, I don't know what's over in that fenced off area. I'm probably not gonna walk over there because of bushes and I'm wearing shorts. Uh, we touched on me being stupid earlier, that's part of it. I'm guessing you could camp here. I don't know, I didn't say see any signs that said you couldn't camp right here, but there is a nice picnic table, so this is a good stop for lunch if you're here midday. All right, so earlier I was pointing to the tree, the nice green tree. This here is actually Rock Spring Loop Trail, and this is where it starts right here at this cabin. You can park here, they have an information board up there, and you can hike down to the spring. I haven't tested the water myself, but I bet it is fresh. And I don't have time to hike a one mile round trip. I barely have time to walk up here currently. What's nice is some of this area isn't too far off the beaten path. So you don't have to do the entire Mojave Road to come see these really beautiful areas and these really neat pieces of history. You can actually get on the freeway, find a road that just veers hard left or hard right, and it will take you within a few miles of all of these locations. It's, it's really wonderful. So I don't know what the building's for. Maybe it houses some things that they use to take care of the land. I don't know, but please be respectful. Uh, don't be breaking into places. Obviously it is locked for a reason. Don't be throwing rocks at windows. This place is upkept. This is the public's land and we need to take care of it. Otherwise, they're gonna close it off to the public and we won't get to enjoy all of this beautiful history and this beautiful nature. Anyway, there's things been getting shut down lately and it's kind of getting to me a little bit. And all it is is because of people not respecting the land. Sometimes people suck. Clearly somebody broke in. Broke the lock off the hasp. Anyway. I'm not going in there. We are on a pretty main road here. The Mojave Road kind of joins it, but as yeah, I'm going along... Camp, I'm gonna have to organize a whole bunch of stuff. I'm gonna have to pull some stuff out. But as I'm going along, I'm really enjoying the scenery. I mean, look at that hill. Some pretty neat stuff. Anyway. Oh. That, that right there, that right there is Paiute Mountain. And, and it's not the only Paiute Mountain in California, trust me. Because because I've seen a couple. There's even a Paiute Mountain Road. Not here though. Well, well, there might be. Anyway, I might be going a little crazy. So, uh, I mean, we are in the middle of the desert. That's what happens when you are traveling through the desert and you are lacking hydration or sustenance or beer. Anyway. Driving along in my automobile. Ba -da 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 -da. 